G'day guys, welcome back to the lab, part two of the roll cage fabrication and install in this Mitsubishi Lancer. So have a look at part one if you want a little bit of detail on how that happened. Chopped up the old cage, bent the new main hoop. So today we'll start off, we'll put the harness bar in there. That's actually 44 mil harness bar, normally I only run 38. We've got a lot of 44 mil tubes, so let's just do that bigger bar is always good I need to talk to the guy and confirm that that's the right height because different seats require different height harness bars and if we put that at the wrong height the harnesses will be at the wrong angles and that's quite critical these days to get that right because of harness devices being required on a lot of racetracks and stuff and you have to get those angles right so we'll do that first I'll give him a quick call say are you sure follow his instructions you know and then we'll get on with getting that in the car. Hear that little mess that's sitting outside there. Funny how it looks like a jungle gym that's sitting next to a child's slide, eh? We'll get that mess inside. I'll chop that up for templates and, and whatnot. And we'll get on with getting it all in the car. All right, so main hoop is bent up, as you saw. The harness bar is now in place. And the footing plates are on the main hoop. And it's in the car for a bit of a test fit. Bit. So, a bit of an awkward way to do it, but that's how the car was done originally. So, quite a bit of surface area on the bottom there, as per Motorsport New Zealand rules, and then a bit of a return up on the sill. So, once it's in the car, there's actually there's quite a lot of room at the top. As you can see, you're supposed to follow the contour of the car, but. Um, I guess if you put a hood lining in there that would be pretty close to that so I'll let that one slide I probably would have gone a little bit higher if it was my own design rather than replicating something but um, here we go alright let's talk about feng shui don't ask me how to spell that um, let's talk about making the car look good by getting angles about right so we're working with the rear back stays they can be just about any angle. There's a minimum angle they have to be. These will never come close to that. It's to do with how vertical they are. I think it's 30 degrees. It's in the motorsport manual anyway. And I've got that sitting on the toolbox over there to have a look at that. So I've notched the end of these. I'm just using magnets to hold that. In, well, nearly hold it in place. You can see that one's moved. That needs tweaking before I tack weld it. And there's our mounting plates go onto the top of the wheel tubs there they're a uh, minimum surface area 60 square centimeters according to motorsport new zealand rules so i'm just making them a little bit bigger than that just so you know you won't have any problems now that angle there isn't quite right because they'd be a little bit short and look a little funny if they came down to match that so i'll let that one slide it doesn't look bad when the doors listen to that that needs some crc doesn't look bad when the door's closed anyway because that angle on the back there changes to there, changes to there. So they pretty much line up with the back screen. So I think that's alright. I think we'll let that slide. I've placed them slightly differently to what the car had them originally. So now they line up, as you can see, with the side of the vehicle. Pretty much the exact same angle there. So it's just little things like that. It means nothing. Most people probably wouldn't even bother with it or, or care actually lines up with the main hoop too doesn't it um, so yeah most people wouldn't bother or care but little things like that when you get it all done and the whole cars lined up like that it can make a big difference in how it looks so anyway we'll carry on it's bloody hot today I'm absolutely roasting I've gone through so many drinks Haven't made much progress but that's okay it's the quality not the um, not the speed of the job it's the quality so we'll carry on all right 20 past six is probably time to put it put it all to bed for the day um haven't been doing it all day i've been doing some other things but the rear end is out of the car the main hoop and the back stays foot plates and diagonals so that's in theory can go back in the car like that it came out like that with the back stays on there diagonals should not get in the way i'm going to tack weld the brace that goes across here from there 
to that side to that side just tack it in just very quietly and make sure I can put this back into the back of the car I'm not going to weld it all up and then go ah doesn't fit so um, there's those magnets being put to use again they work quite well a couple of issues there though with TIG welding these magnets here I'm talking about TIG welding the plasma electron flow whatever off the tip gets a bit mucked up by the electromagnetic field or magnetic field and yeah things go yucky so you can't you can't weld too close to the magnets it's only good just to hold it just to tack it and then you take the magnets away and carry on these little jobbies down here were a pain in the brain that's 44 mil diameter tube that's 38 that's on a different angle to that that goes around a corner yeah it was fun hey but that's the way it was so i've put it back to the way it was and the guy should be happy with that i hope all right that's day two is that day two i think that's day two so i'll carry on tomorrow will be day three and that should be in the back of the car and the front what's called the laterals should go in it's all pretty easy from there there's not a lot more once those laterals are done a couple of diagonals windscreen bar dash bar and we're good so maybe tomorrow we'll see right so obviously that's all welded up now to this point not the um, not world champion of welding but hey they look all right they'll do the job just fine so the next stage see if we can get that in the back of the car should go in the back of the car there's no reason why not and then have a look at how much more we can put on and still get it in the back of the car so there's a bar that goes across from here across to the same point on the other side there's also a bar that goes from here down to here now you've got to be pretty careful about those i can definitely make them up make them fit on the saw horses here on the bench so to speak that's easy we can do that whether we can actually weld them on there and get it in the back of the car that's the next challenge so there you go it does fit back in there a little bit of a challenge it was quite tricky but it's back in the hole a couple of those plates need adjusting you can see an air gap in there especially that back driver's side one but obviously that's easy to do and things can get a bit of a tweak when those other bars go in to put them back in the right spot so as i was uh, guesstimating this bar that runs from this point here to the other side just no chance like if I put that in and then try and weld in this cage um, or slide it back in the car rather that'll be a disaster these bars that run down here we can do these so it pays to do as much as you can out of the car for access and just makes it so much easier better quality welding and less stress on the chump behind the camera so I'll mark all that up we'll get those bars in we'll see if we can get the cage back in there carry on after lunch we'll probably get those laterals in there and it'll start looking like a proper roll cage it's kind of i think that's all you need for it to be a half cage that's legit pass would pass motorsport new zealand rigs for half cage or a roll bar i think they call it rather than the roll cage the whole cage includes the front bar is just the main hoop and back stays basically in a harness bar it's coming up to hot o'clock so got those bars in that we were just talking about before our diagonals and as I say and I've probably said it a million times this bar that goes from here to the other foot at the back there's no chance of that going in um, and then this going back in the car so now's a good time to go through check all your welds check absolutely everything you can that's going to be hard to do in the car so just make sure it's all square and all the welds are all good and there's nothing that's going to be climbing upside down jamming my feet through the boot and my head up in between two bars and getting a sore neck and all that trying to do any welding so this is actually the worst part of the cage is all the stuff in the back so it's great to be able to get it done we'll call those a bench for today great to be able to get it done on a bench and then carefully throw it back in the car now it was a challenge and i wouldn't recommend doing it the way i've just done it unless you're absolutely certain you can get it in and in and out you know get it out and back in there so yeah it was a slightly different technique to get it back in there to what it was to pull it out so i was pretty lucky all right look that's that in and um 
so fast we blew the doors off it so that's all sorted out that bar was welded in in the car which is not the easiest thing in the world to do but fortunately because nothing else is attached to the car at the moment so you can just tip that frame over as you need slide it forward tip it that way get your welding done so that's all come out pretty good like I say I'm not the world's best welder and don't pretend to be but that all looks pretty tidy certainly better than um, better than the previous job in the car so that's good I've improved it now we've got the uh, the rest of it as we've discussed so I'll get on with that and yes it's still hot in here today so uh, a few drinks being consumed never mind all right so we've basically run out of day now I can't make too much noise around here it's it's a residential property so it's but after 6.30 helicopter in the background there anyway got the got the rear end of the, the cage sitting in the car not welded in yet we'll leave that loose in case we have to move it around to do something else like uh, push it back to get the side intrusion beams in or something like that so it's a bit of a funny way to do this cage in some places because of the way the sill comes out from the edge of the a pillar there you can see that bar is just about vertical but there's still quite a quite a big gap here normally you would put a footing box on the bottom there so that you could lift that bar where it meets the car you can lift this up and then bring it across and reduce this gap here and that would reduce your intrusion into the screen of that bar so it's it's below the maximum um, limits for motorsport new zealand rigs but it's it's getting pretty close and i would like it further out you just without tipping that bar over which is pretty yucky i think that's how the original one was done so that the bottom of that bar actually was on an angle out like that to get that further out into the pillar <laughs> all right like share subscribe if i'm any good and uh, if you've got any questions relating to roll cages or what, what we're doing at the moment then fire away I'll see if I've got the time to try and answer those for you in the next stage of this this will be a three part now I was hoping for a two part but I'm too slow the diff in the back of this I said it might be a Ford 9 inch it's Toyota Hilux with a Detroit locker in it it's about 3 point I think it was a 3.9 ratio so there you go for anyone who wanted to know the answer to that one All right. See you later.